In this video, we are going to learn about Lord Buddha. First of all, we have to understand Lord Buddha was born in which BC and in which BC he died and what happened in his life and what was the message to this world. First of all, understand in which BC he was born and in which place. It was 563 BC. In Lumbini, present day Nepal, Lord Buddha was born in a royal family and he died at the age of 80, you can say 483 BC, in Kushinagar. Kushinagar, Kushinagar, present day Uttar Pradesh, and he was born in Lumbini village. Or Lumbini, you can say that is in Nepal. His mother was, now we are going to discuss who was his mother and who was his father. You can say his mother was Mohamaya. Mohamaya was his mother and father was. Suddhadana, Suddhadana, and we have to remember Suddhadana was king of Kapila Vastu, and his mother Mohamaya belongs to Kosala dynasty. So Mohamaya belongs to Kosala dynasty, and Suddhadana belongs to Kapila Vastu, or you can say he was ruler of Kapila Vastu. Lord Buddha. Lord Buddha left home at the age of 29. At the age of 29, he left home and after wandering here and there, at the age of 35, he got enlightenment under a people tree, under a big tree. Presently, it is there and many people travel there to get blessings. And this Buddhism later on became a religion in ancient time and was patronized by Magadh, you can say Magadh, Magadh king people or you can say Magadh rulers, they patronized Buddhism. And at that time, Biharas or you can say Buddhist monasteries, simply you can say Biharas or Bihar. Biharas were established at that time for the Buddhist monks by Magadh kings. Now let's understand who was Buddha's teacher or those teachers who saved the life of Lord Buddha. One teacher you can say at that time Alara, Alara Kalama. Alara Kalama was one teacher and Udraka or simply you can say Udraka Ramputa. So Udraka Ramputa and Alar Kalama were two teachers who saved the life of Lord Buddha at that time. Now let's learn the four noble truths of Buddhism. Actually Buddha emphasized that this life is full of sorrows and there is no pleasure, there is no divineness. And this uh, sorrowness and uh, uh, pain are described in his teachings. We call this actually four noble truths. So let's this let's discuss these four noble truths. One is uh, human life is full of suffering and sorrow. So this life is full of sorrow, and full of sorrow means, or you can say the cause of sorrow in life is desire. So Buddha emphasized that if desire is killed or if desires are wiped out from the life of human beings or person or people you can say, we can have Nirvana. And Buddha emphasized that this Nirvana is nothing free from, free from all sorrows, pain, sufferings from this world and he said this Nirvana is enlightenment or the pure knowledge or bliss. So you can say Nirvana is enlightenment 
enlightenment uh, he said that this enlightenment can be achieved by uh, you can say ashtanga marga or eightfold eightfold method and this ashtang marga now we are going to discuss this is ashtang marga you can see this uh, diagram is very easy to understand that or you can say eight fold method so one is right action right occupation right effort right mindfulness or you can say concentration wisdom thinking and speech so if a person has right occupation maintains right effort and is very concentrated one or very careful about his work and if he possesses right wisdom right thinking then then person can achieve the real divineness in the words of lord buddha and this ashtang marga or eight fold method is very crucial in the teachings of lord buddha now we are going to learn about the jewels of buddhism actually what is this jewel you can see here three jewels and these jewels you have to remember b d s b d s b stands for buddha d stands for dharma and a stands for sangha actually this sangha means community and dharma means you can say religion or uh, here buddha means actually teacher so i have described here that remember this 1 2 and 3 you can say this is b or this is d and this is s which are called actually the three jewels of buddhism now we are going to learn the buddhist councils which were held for four times in ancient time you just see here first buddhist council was held under the patronage of ajat satru and venu was rajagriha and chairman was mahakashyapa and it was in 483 bc and second was in under the patronage of kalasok and it was held in boishali chairman sabakami and held in 383 bc and third one during the time of ashoka and it was held in pataliputra chairman was mogaliputra and this was held in 250 bc and the last one or you can say fourth buddhist council was patronized by kanishka it was in kundavana kashmir under the chairmanship of vasumitra and it was held in 72 80 72 ad or you can say 72 uh, ad actually ashoka was very much influenced by buddhism after the kalinga war in 261 bc and uh, ashoka was the responsible person or ashoka king ashoka or ashok the great was very much very much influenced by the buddhism and he spread to sri lanka and sent his daughter and brother daughter and son to uh, neighboring countries in order to spread buddhism and we have to remember here that after fourth buddhist council we can say fourth buddhist council this fourth buddhist council buddhism was divided into two parts we can say hinayan and mahayan hinayan is called lesser hinayan is called lesser vehicle and mahayan is called higher vehicle and apart from this uh, you can say hinayan mahayan 
another thing or another part was evolved we can say vajrayan so vajrayan was also evolved at that time so please remember vajrayan mohayan and hinayan and this mohayan and hinayan was splitted or divided or you can say buddhism was divided during the fourth buddhist council in kashmir buddhism does not recognize the existence of god and the soul so whenever we are discussing buddhism please remember that buddhism does not accept the existence of god god and soul is not accepted not accepted by buddhism so this is the most important part of buddhism we have to remember that god and existence of soul is not accepted by buddhism another thing we have to remember that buddhist literature was written in pali language so pali was the language used at that time for buddhist literature so whenever literature part is concerned buddhist literature was written by pali language or you can say in pali language and these are called vinaya pitaka sutta pitaka and abhidham pitak let's understand this uh, literature the first literature you can say vinaya pitaka so let's understand this vinaya pitak first is vinaya vinaya pitak one second one you can say that is sutta pitak sutta wala pitak and you can say last one abhidham pitak abhidham pitak so first remember this bina pitak bina pitak was recited by upali in first buddhist council and it contains the rules of monastic discipline and sutta pitak was recited by anand at second buddhist council and it was divided into various parts you can say and you can say jatak or stories of buddha's previous life you will find in this sutak or sutta pitak so life of uh, life of buddha or jatak story is uh, found in sutak or sutta pitak and abhidham pitak is very much philosophical the last one you can say the abhidham pitak is very much philosophical so please remember this is all about this uh, philosophy of abhidham pitak and sutta is a life story of uh, buddha the previous life story and bina pitak tech tall tells about the rules of monastic discipline that means how monks will uh, monks will uh, lead a life that is mentioned in this uh, bina pitak thank you very much wish you happy learning